The Walking Dead is a series I hold near and dear to my heart. Season 1 through 8 was peak fiction and you can't convince me otherwise. But with the new show coming out and the recent release of the dumpster fire that is Walking Dead Destinies, I thought it was appropriate to go through and platinum the extensive catalog of games that came to rise from this show. Games like Walking Dead Survival Instinct. Ah! Holy f Holy shit. Holy shit. Or the Walking Dead VR games. Oh! Oh my god. You made me could squeal like Mickey Mouse right there. You 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 dirty you dirty gun. You dirty gun you. Yeah. Hatchet, hatchet, hatchet. Oh! All good, all good. I'm a, I'm a man, I'm a man. Can these am I too short for these zombies or something? Why can't they see me? Oh! What was that? Dude, I'm sweating fucking bullets here. <gasps> or bawling my eyes out on the Telltale game. I can't, I don't know what to say, dude. I don't know what to say. I'm just sitting here sobbing. I never, I never want to experience something like this again. And then the game we sadly have to finish on. Hey, you. What? Oh, uh, what? Get you back to your room. Oh, dude, this mission is insufferably whore. Insufferable. Fuck! This mission is insufferable. Insufferable. Why can't I say it? Insufferable. Lee. Insufferably. Insufferably. Fuck it. But for now, we boot up the PS3 and begin the Walking Dead survival instinct. We start off in a tutorial kind of area where we are meant to die, and I accidentally earned a trophy by sheer panic here. Oh my god. This looks like hot ass on my TV. Wow, this forest looks very, uh, foresty. There's a lot of foliage around here. Do I have to crouch this entire time? Bro, I did not f***ing miss. Oh, oh no, Buck! Oh my God! Ah! Ah! No, run! Juke his ass! Oh my God, bro! Jesus Christ! Why is there so fucking many? Holy fuck! What? What the? F that zombie was eating my guts. Oh, no. After switching the reins to Daryl, we get introduced to our first location. Here we learn the basics of the really, really monotonous, awful, horrible, sorry excuse that is combat. Bonk, 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 bonk. <laughs> After we get through that mess, we make it to the end of the level where we earn two trophies. The first one is called the Oedipal Complex for some reason. I could just be misunderstanding what they're going for here, but that does not seem like the right wording for this situation. Anyway, we also completed this area without being grabbed by a walker, resulting in another trophy. Once you beat an area, you have a little resting spot before you move on. Here you can manage items you have and you can send survivors out to get materials. And when you are finished up, you can plan the road ahead and pick where you want to go out of two options. For now, we can only pick one area, Sedalia. Once arrived, you need to do a bunch of stupid tasks. And while making our way around the map, we run into our first optional survivor, Warren. He makes me go into a trailer park to retrieve keys off of a zombie, earning a sweet ass trophy as well. Who wants it? Oh, you want it? Get ready for this. Bam! Oh, two piece! Two piece, baby! Oh, two heads are better than one. I didn't even know that was a trophy. After grabbing the key and returning to Warren, we earn another trophy for recruiting him. Okay, where's the car? Oh, oh dude, that trophy. What the fuck is that trophy icon? <laughs> oh my god. They're like staring me dead in the freaking eyes. After starting the generator, we get absolutely bombarded by zombies where we earn a trophy for killing four of them in a single grapple sequence. Jesus Christ! Where the f did you guys come from? God damn! Bro! I can't fucking move! Run! Fuck you! Run! Swiftly completing this area, we are back on the road. This time, we get an option to search an unmarked location. This game has a shotgun? Oh, give me that. Wherever that is, I need it. I mean, I'll take this dude on. It's 1v1. And I'm gonna win every single time! 
I can't find these fucking keys. Oh, found them. Oh, on the road again. Dope, I love my trophies. I hit area after area, eventually getting a trophy for performing 50 sneak attacks on zombies, which isn't hard at all. Then we make it to Fontana, the last area in the first act. Merle! The goats. Damn, need to put on some sunscreen. No way I gotta escort this man back. Oh, okay, good. Good, good, good. <coughs> Sorry, brother. Damn, that was a wrong time to burp. My bad, boys. And we run into another problem. We have too many survivors, so we have to kick one out. In doing so, we get a trophy for it. We do have to worry about fuel, and we have missions that let us scavenge for some if we run out. So the next trophy we got was to consume 250 fuel, which is very easy to do naturally, especially considering we have to do multiple playthroughs and it carries over progress. But slowly going through this mid-ass story, we complete the second act. Grand idea, Dylan. Instantly get yourself stuck. Oh, never mind. Juke them bitches out. Oh my god, my game is the FPS. Uh, where the fuck am I going? There's a zombie right here. Ah! Gotta love it. Oh, hello. Bonk. Okay. Oh! This is like the fourth. Oh my god, stop. Why? This is like the fourth fucking time that they've done that to me. Really? They're, they're about to do that shit again, back to back. Bro. Oh! Dude, I'm getting sick of this. I I'm, I can't stand it. Stop doing that shit. It's such a lazy jump scare. And I hate that it gets me every single time. Really? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, great. Here we go. Another fun sequence of just pressing R2 for 10 minutes. Okay. Oh! I, uh, the tro- okay, the trophy made a sound. Did my game just crash? Now my PlayStation is frozen. God, I love the PS3! I don't think you guys understand how long it took to load into a PS3 game. It was super frustrating to do this repeatedly. So during the downtime, your boy was grinding. Grinding what you say? AFK Journey, today's sponsor. AFK Journey is a new, innovative, ethereal RPG. I know, fancy. From distinct visuals to intricate gameplay mechanics, this game has it all. Embark on a journey as Merlin, recruiting heroes across six factions and formulating different builds and tactics tactics to get the upper hand in battle. You can even reunite with AFK Arena's beloved characters and discover new ones. Explore huge and diverse maps, solve fun puzzles, and meet interesting NPCs with easy one-handed gameplay. You can also customize your character, offering multiple image combinations for the protagonist. AFK Journey will also be giving away 40 heroes during the official release, including epics giving you a wide variety of strategies to use in combat. Additionally, you receive 200 plus free draws by progressing through the game and doing a events like logging in for seven days. The best part is it's free to play on iOS, Android, and on AFK Journey's official site for PC. If you use my CD key AFK Journey 88 in the description, you can redeem it to get 100 diamonds and 18,888 coins. Thanks again to AFK Journey for sponsoring the video. Not much happens during the third act, but in a freight train area, I of course get destroyed by a horde of zombies. Now where are you? Damn, dude. Oh shit. Get up, get up, get up! Boom, who needs a headshot? Dude, this is some ass. The second to last area is called Sherwood. This place is important because there's a part where you have to either save someone called Terry or Jane. You can only save one. And this does pertain to the next trophy I was working on. So I elect to save my boy Terry. And once I do, I get a trophy for completing the third act. Then I instantly get pushed into the final area of the game where I get the trophy Guy's Night Out. Oh, Guy's Night Out! It's because I have a full squad of dudes. Damn it. It's a sausage fest up in here. Before even arriving at Sherwood, I recommend you dismiss all male or female survivors depending on what you're going for. It's just easier not to mess up that way. So as you go through levels, you pick up different weapons ranging from melee weapons to guns. For two trophies, we need to get a kill with every weapon. And after reaching the final area, I'm able to secure my last two ranged weapons needed for trophy number one. Man, whatever. Where's my pistol at? I need to find my pistol. This high power, fast action handgun. Where's it at? Oh, here it is. Is this it? No, that's the high power handgun. I'm looking for the fast action one. Am I blind, man? There's no way it's here. Oh my lord. Bro. 
Come here, boy. Bam. Oh, one hit. Bam. Bam. There we go. I got to kill with every weapon, man. I know for sure I did. Now, this game better not screw me out of it. Yes! There we go. Oh, shit. We have some more boat. Wow. A lot more bogeys. Right at the end of the final area, we earn a whopping six trophies. They all have something to do with zombies and killing them besides two, which I will explain after this trophy pop compilation. Okay, so the goal here, I need to kill every single one except the final zombie. And try my best to determine when the final zombie's gonna be. Oh my god. Come on, blitz, blitz. Oh, uh, uh, cool. I don't know what that trophy's for, but... I'm killing a lot of shit, so it's got to be something for that. Can this shit just take off already? You bastards! I'll kill you all! Dude, this is shaking my controller so much. Oh, uh, cool. I got another trophy. I just, I'm just killing zombies, man. How many are there? What is that trophy? I really wish I could check, dude. Hey, get out of dodge. There we go. While sitting in the turret seat towards the end, we need to open up the menu and drop every single weapon, melee, and all. But leave one firearm with one single bullet. Doing so will net us the trophy down to my last. And we earn another trophy for completing this mission using only guns. And thus completing the first playthrough of this shitty game. This story though, fucking sucked. <laughs> This game is not good. Moving on to the second playthrough, we now have a pretty good idea of how this game works. Once we beat the game for the first time, we unlock relics. You can only activate one per playthrough, so I chose getting the crossbow and AR at the start of the game. In the beginning, when playing as Daryl's dad, when the zombies come crawling in, we need to get five kills in this sequence. Doing so will earn us a trophy only when we beat the level, which happens later on. So we just earn some trophies in the meantime. We switch to Daryl and just start running in circles. I do this about 10 times to earn the trophy extreme conditioning then picking up the crossbow we work on three different trophies okay pull a bolt from a walker then kill him with it so right in the ass cheeks oh oh yeah i think i pulled it i think i did it i don't know that was a bit sloppy on my part did yeah there we go mind if i borrow this okay that's another trophy done now we have another bow trophy i need to do there right in the d that sh <laughs> should be a trophy, I think. Yeah, there we go, porcupine. Fuck, dude, like, why does it go there? That's the knee. That is the knee. I got, dude, come on. Yes, there we go. I used to be a human like you? What, what even is that trophy name? After finishing that up, I get the trophy, The Hunted Becomes the Hunter for killing five enemies in the previous sequence I explained earlier. And so far, man, we're doing great. I go back to good old Garwater. There was a melee weapon I missed earlier, and this was my last weapon needed for the trophy. That's a nice swing you've got. Finishing up all of the weapon collecting bullshit. After getting done with Garwater, I make it to Lemon Hill, and I kind of accidentally beat the area without taking any damage, which is pretty simple when you can just one tap zombies in the head with an AR. With the second playthrough, we need to take the opposite route we took last time. This is needed for a multitude of trophies down the line. So the next area takes us to a logging camp and during a certain part, there are giant saw blades we must push zombies in to earn a trophy. Whoa, hello. Oh, my God, dude, it's moving. So every time I push forward, dude, I go like super speed. Oh, I, I don't, oh, that was it? I think that was it actually. I didn't push, I pushed like fucking three. Does it count even if they just walk into it? What idiots. Okay. Next, we gotta distract 50 walkers. Not 50 times, just 50 zombies. Just throw a bottle into a herd and you'll get this trophy pretty much instantly. Apart from the marked destinations on the map, during the trip there, you will be stopped by random events which will often make you go through an unmarked location. Do these 25 times and you will get the trophy zigzagging all over the road. Then, continuing on just picking the complete opposite route I took in the first playthrough, I travel to the final optional area. Now here, oh, hey, been everywhere. Well, now I need to dismiss both of these people to get another trophy. And I know been everywhere is like 
to visit every area. After completing this area, you want to dismiss every single person in your car before reaching Sherwood. Doing so will net you a trophy once you arrive there. Then, instead of picking Terry, pick Jane, and since she's the only survivor you got, once you finish that area, you'll get another trophy for showing up in the final spot with only female survivors this time. And back at the turret seat again, I killed a ton of zombies, making sure to shoot them in the legs to dismember them to earn this trophy. You motherfuckers! Oh, that was really good timing, dude. That's for 250 limbs. I, I was keeping track of that. That's the only reason I'm doing this part, actually. Sadly, we have to make our way through this game a third time. But this time, when starting in the first area, we don't want to fire our weapon. This is because I'm going for the trophy True Dixon, which requires me to only use his crossbow to beat an area. With the relic, I can get it right away and just breeze through the tutorial spot. MREs are a sort of healing item this game has. You can find it throughout levels or send your survivors out to scavenge them. But every time you send your survivors out, they have a chance to not come back, and if they do, it's usually usually with a tiddly wink of health, you can use MREs and MREs only to heal them, and we need to do this 25 times in order to get the trophy that looks like it hurts. Now to cover collectibles. This game just has it all. We have to find 16 wooden squirrels and 8 missing persons posters. Again, these can't all be collected in one playthrough as they need you to go through areas you can't if you took a certain path, and there's usually a squirrel in each destination that must be picked up before finishing it anyway. The same goes for the posters. I do get kind of lucky and end up finding the last of both of them in the same map. And then there's the squirrel right there. Bam! 16 out of 16! And I'm gonna hurry up and get the collectible right over here as well. I should get a trophy in a second. I know the PSG trophies take fucking forever to pop. I don't know why the trophy's not popping. But I also got... Oh, you can't see it, but it's 8 out of 8 posters. Hey, there we go! No stone... That's for all the squirrels. Damn, that was late. I should be getting the, the poster one soon. It should be like missing eight or something. Bro, why does it take so long to get... There we go. The missing eight. Okay, that's all the collectibles done. Dude, I don't have to stay in these areas any fucking longer than I have to now. During our road trips, we have the option to either take the back roads, the street, or the highway. Each has their pros and cons, and I'm too lazy to explain. Just know back roads are good, but slow. Never take the streets, and the highways are the quickest. But highways do have a higher chance of breaking down your car, to which you will need to scavenge to find a new car part. You need to have this happen to you five times to earn the trophy. Duct tape can fix anything. The next trophy is probably the most complicated one. As I mentioned earlier, there are optional survivors throughout our little road trip to freedom. The problem is, even though most of the survivors aren't missable, the ones that are, are complete RNG. They sometimes show up in certain places on our way to certain areas, but there is a trick. Since this game has been out for like 10 years, people have figured out what roads they spawn on. So what you do is take the back road, sometimes the highway, it depends on the person, but take the road and keep scavenging until when you hit the road and you hear the people in the car talking. That means there is no other random event left and they are heading towards the end of the destination. Quit to the PS3 XMB and just reload your game. You'll be set back into the beginning of the trip with another chance to get the survivor you're looking for. After knowing that, getting this trophy was a breeze. This is it. Wait, 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 wait. Make sure. No, don't keep driving. Search that area, baby. Okay, so if I die here, boys, I'm gonna be pissed. Oh, this is her. This is her. Yes. Oh my God. Bitch, I don't care. Shut up. Shut up. That's it. That's it. The, I just had to talk to her. Yes, dude. All the survivors are done. Yes. Yes, dude. I can just take the highway now. Oh my god, this is huge! Making it to Sherwood again, I figured it was time to grind out some trophies. The first two are related to the grappling mechanic, and firstly, I need to kill a hundred zombies while being grappled, and that's fairly simple. Get grappled a bunch, die, and repeat. And the second trophy wants me to prevent 50 zombies from grappling me. This is a little bit more tricky, but there is a technique to it. While the zombies are grappling you, once you kill one, just spam R1 and you'll guarantee shake a zombie off you, counting towards the trophy. I did this 
for maybe like 40 minutes and got both trophies without much sweat. While grinding, I literally just get a trophy for dying 13 times. I feel like at this point, they were just running out of trophy ideas. Now it's time for the fourth and final playthrough. Same as last time, I don't kill any zombies in the first section, but this time I stick to that same rule, but for the entire area. I pacifist the rest of the level, getting one trophy closer to the platinum and one step closer to happiness. Each destination has optional objectives you can complete. They're all really easy, just boring and pointless, kind of like this game. There is a way you can farm this though. In Sedalia, just do the two optional objectives and then restart the level, then do them again. It takes about three minutes each time and saves a lot of annoying trouble in the future. Either way, you're needed to do this 25 times to earn a trophy. Oh, <laughs> I actually didn't even expect it to pop at all. Damn, okay. Well, that makes this way faster. During trips, you can choose which cars you want to drive around to get from point A to point B. To get different vehicles though, you need to find keys around the map. There are only four and once you collect them all, you get the last collectible trophy. How many times have I said trophy? The last two trophies aren't anything special, sadly. When sending out survivors on scavenging missions, they have a chance of death and we need them to die five times. Crazy trophy, right guys? Then the final thing left, consume 50 MREs. Yep, that's it. A giant disappointment like this game was to me. I had to play it through like 75% of the game again just to get enough MREs and it was also like 4 in the morning so I apologize if I'm a little quiet. Come on, hit me with a grab. Oh, you didn't. What a time save. Oh my god. Dude! Oh, this mid-ass game is over. Oh my god. Bro. I had to f dude I had to fight for my life to find the motivation to play this shitty game. I'm out of here, bro. <laughs> this game. Oh my god. Now, bro, let's get on to some real peak. Walking Dead Telltale comes in at a 1 out of 10 with one playthrough and 35 hours to platinum. It has a very simple trophy list, legit just play the game. So I'm briefly going to go over the story and just show you guys some of the craziest reactions along with the trophies earned. We start off in Season 1, Episode 1, A New Day, introducing the main character, Lee, heading to prison for a murder he absolutely committed without a doubt. But it's all about character development, fellas, and Lee wins me over, don't you worry. But what the cop doesn't know is I cut the brakes. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Or am I? Jesus, that's so loud! Lee faces off with his first walker and makes quick work of him. Running away from the approaching horde, Lee finds himself in a house. In this house, he meets another goat in the Walking Dead universe. How old are you? That is not the first question you should be asking, fella. What's your name? What's your name? I'm Clementine. Clement, this is, this is uh, that's Clementine, okay. Clementine. Okay. I'm Lee. Lee. Lee and Clem. Lee helps out some farmer's boys and they take him to their farm and we meet another fan favorite there called Kenny. What separates this from other games is the tough decisions you need to make. Hanging on the edge of morality, pressure, and just pure critical thinking all needs to be decided in under like 10 seconds. Just to make a choice that affects how the rest of the game is going to play out. The first time this happens is on a farm. Duck's dumbass drives over Sean's leg and we have to save one of them. I choose Duck because let's be honest, he's got more life to live. Herschel gets pissed and kicks us out. Kenny takes us to my family-owned drugstore where we meet some new people and in comes freaking douchebag. We've already seen this Your happen. Your fucking we nose is massive, bro. We gotta throw him out or smash his head. You, okay, <laughs> that just seems like something you want to do. Kenny gets caught with a Tekken combo. Yeah! Oh, and Big Nose gets a heart attack from it. Me, Glenn, and Carly then head to the motel to pick up some gas and we run into like a suicidal lady. I mean, <sighs> am I morally wrong for saying that I think she can have the gun? Yes, I gave her the gun, guys. Going back to the pharmacy, we can get Larry's pills while trying to break in an alarm trips and we have our second tough decision. Oh my God, can y'all shut up? Are you We're gonna sure? die if you keep talking. Just peep game and lock in. Oh, damn, Lee. Damn, Lee. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, fuck. All right, Doug. Uh, you're useless, to be honest. Carly. Bay. Carly, I'm not even looking at Doug, bro. We're saving Carly. But hey, 
At least we get a trophy. Episode two picks up three months later at the motel as we made a base there. We get approached by two local dairy farmers. They asked for gas and trade for some food. And of course we accepted. Half of the group visits the farm and we do some chores. Me and Markiplier got jumped by some bandits that are in a feud with the family helping us. Brenda, the mother of the family, brings in Mark to patch him up. In the meantime, Lee and Kenny grow suspicious of the barn in the back. We open it up and it's like a makeshift saw movie back there. Truly, truly awesome. At that time, dinner was ready, but Lee was not having it. We investigate upstairs and find Mark. Well, half of them. I confront the brother lovers downstairs and I get clocked. Waking up in the meat freezer, Larry has his last heart attack. I'm helping her, man. Come this is on. an easy decision. Wake I'm up, helping please. her. Why would we not try to help help him? I mean, he's a douchebag, but I mean, come on. Oh! With Clem helping us escape, it was time to get some revenge. But not for me, because I gotta be a good role model. So I leave the brother lovers as walker bait and get out of there. On the road back, everyone sees a car loaded with supplies. Again, I follow Clem's moral compass and don't take anything out of that car because she doesn't want me to. And that's another trophy. Episode 3 starts with me and Kenny on a supply run. We have the choice to shoot a girl that's been bitten, and uh, I do. Gotta We're do helping something. her. We're helping her, dude. We're a hero. Okay. Well, she's done. <laughs> God damn it. She's dead. I don't even think she knows we're here. We're leaving her. She was dead anyway, dude. She got bit right there. Now, if she didn't get bit, it would have been a different story, all right? After a successful supply run, back at the motel, we get a visit from the bandits again. Apparently, someone has been feeding them medicine secretly, and it fell through. So they start a shootout, and we drift off in the RV. Lily still wants to get to the bottom of this thievery, and she goes through some drastic measures to do so. Someone's about to snap. No, she's yeah. reaching for something. What the fuck's the problem? No! 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 We leave her ass and get to moving on. And during the road trip, it's revealed that Duck has been bitten. And it's only a matter of time until, you know what. Ignoring that, we now arrive at a rail crossing with a working train. I just had to remove the rust off of a coupling and pry it off so we could move. Some homeless dude joins our crew and we head to Savannah. But sadly, Duck wasn't getting any better, so we had to deal with him. So. Oh! No! Wait, what? Hey, Whoa, what's going on here? Oh my god. Is it Lily? Is it Lily? Wait, did Lily come back, bro? Why? Can't no way. Oh, fucking God. No. <laughs> bro. Man. Holy shit, this episode, bro. No. Give it. Give it to me, man. I'll do it. Come on, Kenny. You don't have to live with yourself, man. I mean, wait, that's that that came out wrong. You don't have to live with this yourself. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is horrible. Oh, damn, bro. At least we almost beat the episode. Shortly after getting back on the train, we are stopped at an overpass, this time with two new survivors at the top, Krista and Omid. There was a truck hanging on top of the overpass. We just needed to burn the hitch pin and drop the tanker. There was about 2,000 problems with that, though. Oh, my God. Holy shit. <laughs> Yo. We gotta go! After saving Chris and Omid during the train sequence, it is shown that Clem has been talking to a creep on her walkie-talkie, and then BOOM! A trophy. Episode 4 is probably my least favorite, but my least favorite in this season is still like an 8 out of 10. So I mean, whatever. We start this episode by getting absolutely annihilated by a herd of walkers because of a mysterious bell ringer. So we all kicked it into high gear and ran into a bedside manor, clearing it out and making it safe. Once everything calms down, me and Kenny leave to go to the marina to find a boat. Sadly, there isn't any left, but the bell ringer shows up and we get the jump on her. At the same time, walkers get a jump on us. I get split from the group into probably one of the last areas you want to be in a zombie apocalypse, the sewers. And boys, listen, you know me. If you don't, then just know I'm the greatest gamer to ever- 
At the end of the area, there's a hole in the wall that reveals a bunch of cancer patients. One of them is a doctor and he takes me back to the bedside manor. During that trip, Clem finds a perfectly good boat in our backyard, it just needs some parts. There is a nearby settlement called Crawford that we need to loot to get it fixed up and it actually goes pretty well considering the circumstances of, you know, life. Making it back to the manor, Vernon is pretty pissed at me for taking Clem with the group to the raid of Crawford, but I stand on business and just tell him off. Not even a minute later after, I tell Clem her parents are dead. Just continuing to stand on business, I guess. All rational thought leaves Clem's brain and she sneaks out with the walkie. And this next part, man, it's just heartbreaking. Oh, 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 oh my god, yo, oh, oh, bro. Lee is mad. Lee is mad. Oh, oh no. 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 Lee? Lee? No. You out here? Are you crazy? What are you doing out here? It ain't no. safe. No. Lee? Uh, I'm... Where's... Oh! Vernon Show it. in the house either. What the hell is going on? We got a problem, man. No fucking way. No way. No. No. No fucking way. Yeah, me and you, no Kenny. God, I, I, I haven't even processed it yet. Damn right. Dude. Can't let you do oh. this <laughs> the group decides to go with Lee and find Clem except Ben, because fuck Ben. We go back to the morgue and search for Vernon, but quickly realize it wasn't him who took Clementine. Yeah, what is this guy's motives? I don't get it. Oh, come on! You, you bitch! You don't get to li leave me on a cliffhanger like that? Oh, man! Holy shit. Wait, there was an option to not kill the kid? Episode 5, the finale, was probably the most hard-hitting, heartstring-pulling piece of entertainment I've ever felt. And it starts off right where episode 4 ended. Still trapped in the morgue, it wasn't too hard to get out. And once we did, that was the least of our problems. The southern herd from the rail crossing has finally made its way into Savannah. Awesome. Sneaking our way back into the manor and we get a fantastic surprise. The boat was gone and who's to blame? Ben. Of course it was Ben. The rail crossing herd followed us back so we gotta fight for our lives. Boarding up the house we get pushed into the attic where we break open a wall and roof hop but some of us don't make it. Oh that is not his, his freaking leg is- Fucking hell. Oh my god. Oh no dude. No. We were just coming around man. Fuck. No, not Kenny. Hell no! Man, I'm not leaving! What did I just say? Let's I'm get not. Ben and get out of here! I'm not leaving you, dude. No, no. Everybody's gonna die before we even make it to Clementine, man! Go get that girl. Kenny, dude. He was literally second or third favorite, dude. It goes God. Lee, Clementine, Damn. Kenny. God. And I'm about to lose. And I, I lost one. I'm about to lose another one. Who knows what the fuck's gonna happen to Clementine. All that was left was me, Krista, and Omid. And five seconds later, we got separated, which left it all up to me. Making it to the hotel, we met the creep on the walkie, and he was really, really weird. He was holding Clem captive, so I'm not gonna lie, I beat the shit out of him. Kill him with kindness. And then strangle him to death. And surprisingly, we are nearing the final minutes of the game. So as a send off, I'm just gonna let it play out. Oh my God, it's gonna land right on my freaking leg, bro. Damn! Damn, grab that bat! Oh wait, that's when I'm handcuffed. Oh shit, just kick it, kick it or something. Can't we just have another episode, man? Another episode, Lee. I don't know if I can. Oh no, no. Shit, shit. You have to shoot me, Clem. You got it. You have to shoot me. You have to shoot. Oh, it hurts hearing him say it, dude. It's okay. It's okay. I'm such a bitch. Oh my god. Oh, please let me put the controller down, bro. I just, I don't want to answer anymore. I just want to freaking sop in, in, in a corner. Me and you, Clem. Me and you. Oh. Keep that hair short. I will. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Please do a cut. Please cut. Please cut. Please cut. I don't want to see it. 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 I don't even want to hear the. I heard the gunshot. Oh man, you got you got a grown ass man crying his eyes out right now. 
Oh, that's, that's not nice. That is not nice, bro. Oh, I'm gonna need... No, no, no. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. <laughs> God damn it. Before getting into season two, we need to play the 400 days DLC. It's nothing special. You just have to play as five different people and relive their past in like 20 minute episodes. They are cool, but they don't play much of a role in the overarching story other than, hey, I've seen this person before. They did some fucked up shit and then proceed to never see them again. So it was just a fun little thing. And once you finish all mini chapters, you earn the trophy Ooh. loose ends. Season two, episode one, the start of a long journey, a journey which we play as Clem through. During the prologue, Omid dies and Krista legit gets sent into the telltale black hole and is never seen again. We get washed up on shore because we got attacked by some random dudes and the first priority is always food. We find some beans and a, a cute dog, but the dog bites the shit out of me and I don't really want to talk about the next part. Oh, oh man, I'm not putting this in the video. Fuck that, man. 30 minutes in and I've I, I've lost everything and I've killed a goddamn doll. A group of survivors surveying the area find me about to pass out. They of course see the bite mark and think it was a zombie's doing. They end up locking me in their shed so I take matters into my own hand. And I sneak to get medicine for myself. After grabbing everything needed, we have to QTE the sterilizing and stitching part, which bro, I don't want to do that. Oh my god, still one more time. Jesus. Oh. Oh, she just fucking. Ooh, bro. During that lovely process, a zombie sneaks in through the hole I made earlier, and we kill it not without making a ton of noise, though. The group of people saw it and they let me stay inside. We chop it up. I talk about Lee and I make an enemy. It's like throwing a hot dog down so, the hallway, man. Since you're. Time's passed. On your own, She's been ran through. She don't even know who the freaking dad is. You are beefing yes, with a is. nine year old. You are a bitch, bro. I'm nine! Let's just say, if the time comes, I'm getting a fucking double kill. The night passes and we begin the day hunting with Pete and Nick. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't ever wanna hunt again. No, we got bitten. Shit. I'm going to, I'm going to Nick. Just <laughs> because my boy's, my boy's done. Whoa, I forgot about the quick time events. Oh my God. Oh my God, dude, this guy's everywhere, man. Oh, that's the end of the episode? Wait, you can't blue ball me like, okay, we're going, I'm going straight into the next episode, dude. I don't care. Straight into the next one. Okay. Okay. I kind of redeemed myself. I kind of redeemed. Did you save Nick or Pete? Bro, did you not see Pete? My man had a bite on his freaking leg. Episode two picks up hiding from the herd that killed Pete. Nick resents me for saving him, but he just drinks till he forgets, so it doesn't even matter. I make it out because Nick is, I want to say a hero, but probably just suicidal. The group goes out to look for Nick, and I'm tasked to look after Carlos's daughter. So we get a visit from Michael Madsen himself which in any other circumstance is probably pretty cool. I just lied to him the entire time because he was just being a full-on creep. Turns out that's a guy we don't want to be around and the group just completely moves out. Three days later, we are still on the run, but we get to a bridge. Me and Luke go to scout it out and we get approached by a friendly enough guy. Too bad Nick popped him before we could even exchange much information. This will definitely come back to haunt us. Clearing out his little camp, I notice a ski lodge that looks pretty dope, but so did some other people. Oh, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Please just Wait. Do what he says. I recognize that. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yo, no way. No way. He's alive. What? The people Kenny runs with gives us food and shelter. While I was talking to Walter, another person approached begging for food. Walter gives her some and she just leaves. No harm, no foul, right? WRONG! Michael Madsen makes another return, but this time he isn't playing games. There's only four people. Oh, Jesus, man. I have a problem with like bones breaking and eye stuff, man. Those are like my two biggest things I can't look at. Oh my God. Good lord. Thank god Bruce Lee's down. Wait, that's not Bruce Lee. There's Bruce Lee. This might be wrong for me to say, but he was probably the only person I was fine with dying. Are we really just going straight to camp? Was there any way I could have avoided that? 
man did i fuck up somehow and that concludes yet another episode episode three begins in a prison but not actually a prison but it really is a prison we have to do some manual labor in return for some food so we load up some ammo with bonnie and get sent up to the greenhouse and cut some berries with sarah too bad she is actually useless so i go out to help her and reggie gets punished for it oh dude Weakness. incompetence Y'all are us all at risk. crazy. Carver sends us out on our way and I head back to Bonnie. She sends me out on an errand and before finishing it, I got grabbed by no one other than Luke. He informs me he has a plan. I just need to secure some walkie talkies. I do get the walkies, but I decide not to follow through with his plan and go with Jane's. Either way, during my rendezvous with Luke to bring him the walkies, I noticed he was gone. I get caught by Bill and he reveals Luke has been caught. Now Carver's pissed. He wants to know who planned the escape along with Luke. Luke. Kenny offers himself up to protect me, the goat, truly one of a kind. He gets beaten within an inch of his life, but Bonnie saves the day and says there was a breach, causing everybody but her to leave. Bonnie pledges to help the group escape when the time is right. So I sneak up to the PA system and discover Alvin's almost dead on the chair. Time being scarce, I rush to turn on the PA system to draw out the herd nearby and overrun the place. Sneaking back, I see Carver holding everybody at gunpoint. Assassin's Creed on him! Yeah! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> get back. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I like to see. Let's go, Kenny. Can I stop voice cracking, please? It's really hard to get my point across when I sound like a prepubescent teenager. You're all just going to let him do this? I'm not going anywhere. I want to see him. It's going to get messy. I know. I know. I want to see it. Show it to me. Me and Rebecca. Me, Rebecca, and Kenny, dude. It is crazy the trio right now. This is the last thing I expected. Wow. I don't think I can show that on YouTube. I'm going to be honest. That is just going to have to be fully blurred. Clementine, you, you've leveled up in my main character top five. You have, you've leveled up. Oh, we ain't out of the woods yet. There is still an approaching horde, but this time we use a technique Lee taught Clem. Covering yourself in walker guts, which not everybody was on board with. Oh my God. Oh my god! We gotta get out of here, bro. We've gotta get out of here. Damn! Cut her arm off. We gotta go, dude. We've gotta go. Oh, dude. Holy shit. What did I just do? That was in the definition of heat. Heat in the moment, man. Heat of the moment. And I think that's it. They're all gonna die. Nope. Gonna die. Ah. Don't let them pull you down with them. Wow, that's a crazy quote that I just heard from her. Oh boy. Okay, so I am in the min minority uh, on a lot of these. Episode 4 does not let any time pass as it picks up right after 3. Yes, I removed Sarita's arm. I was in the heat of the moment, okay? So all we got right now is me, Rebecca, and Jane. We go to the spot discussed to meet everybody. Rebecca's about to give birth, but we're gonna need some supplies for that operation. So me and Jane leave to find Luke and the rest. While looting, we hear distant yelling and approaching a fence to get closer, we see Nick. But sadly, he bit the dust. We group up with Luke and Sarah in a nearby trailer home. Sarah's in a bit of a catatonic state which we need to break her out of. She doesn't listen so I pimp slap her which snaps her out of it. Everyone escapes and we go back to the meetup point. But again, everybody splits up. I go with Jane to find some medicine. We chop it up for a bit before searching for some goodies. But some guy also had the same idea. Why is this man carrying around just a bunch of pills? Oh, I'm yeah? keeping the bag, well, bro. Just <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. You know Rebecca that needs means? that. Huh? After taking the bottle of pills, I reunited with with Bonnie and Mike to get some water for Becca, it was actually fairly easy to get. But once back at the camp, walkers had made a steady advance towards us, which means we gotta make a steady retreat. So back where I stole medicine is where we make base. Walkers, still hot on our tail, make the deck collapse. This in turn forces me to make one tough decision. Oh no! No, 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 no. Dog, I think Sarah's I think Sarah's gone, dude. I think she's trapped under some heavy ass rubble. I made up my mind. I've made up my mind. Grab my hand. God, I don't want to see that, man. During this debacle, Alvin Jr. is born. Oh, it's alive. Damn, he just switched colors like a freaking chameleon. What the hell? Man, that's, that's a little dude. I guess Alvin was wrong, man. It's not a... 
A girl. With winter approaching, we need to prepare, especially with a newborn now. We set out into the cold and I see a man approaching in the snow. It's Arvo. Great. Oh, and he has friends. Great. No. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Is she dying? Holy fuck. Oh, no. I think she's a zombie, bro. I gotta stop pausing, man. I gotta stop pausing. But there's no way I can make a rational decision right now. Bro, her eyes. I, I made sure to look at her eyes. She don't got no pupils anymore, man. I'm gonna unpause and just make a split second decision. Because I don't remember what the other option was. I'm gonna look at it and be like, eh, I don't know. And then either shoot her or do what, it, what the other option is. Hello. I'm calling for help. Uh, Kenny, you bitch. No. Okay, well, uh, golly, man. What the hell? What the hell? Jesus Christ! Episode 5, you know what that means. It's finale time. Don't shit on me too hard for my choices, boys. Starting out with Kenny shooting Rebecca, we crawl to save AJ. The gunfire continues until Jane comes back to save the day. We take Arvo as prisoner and he promises to take us to his shelter where he houses food. Too bad it's literally across the thinnest frozen over lake of all time and to top it off, walkers show up. Luke gets trapped and I have to choose whether to cover him or run to him. I chose to cover him and we both end up falling in, causing him him to save me and sacrificing himself. Bonnie hates me for this, but I really don't care if I'm being for real. Luckily though, we made it to the hideout and with plenty of food and almost a working truck. Finally, just time to relax. Ah, uh, you thought? Mike, Bonnie, and the Russian dude all plot to steal all of the food and weapons and escape via the truck Kenny fixed. I seriously don't know why they did this as they are basically killing a baby. Of course, I confront them, but it's not looking too good for me. Whoa! No. That Russian bastard! I gave this guy so many chances the entire time I'm telling him to ease up, Kenny, ease up, and he just shoots me right there. You shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> I am done playing games. Bro, I just woke up, boys. Come you know on. Thing about me. She's about to leap out of that this truck, you. man. What Watch is out. It? You know the God. thing about people like you, Kenny? Holy just shit, just shut up! I'm just gonna save you from that constant back and forth. With just me, Kenny, Jane, and AJ, things weren't looking so well. Kenny stops at an impasse to siphon some gasoline. Jane at this point tries to convince me to leave with her and just ditch Kenny. Before finishing that combo, some walkers get the jump on us. We get separated, but eventually meet at a rest stop, and the rest is just history, bro. Jane, stop it, man! Stop! What the f do I do? Okay, you guys are both pieces of shit. Got it. Just which one do I want to live with longer? I, I I don't know. Oh my god! Oh no! 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 Oh shit! Oh shit! I'm looking away. Nope. I'm, I can't do it. 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 I'm leaving. A long time. I'm taking AJ with me, bro, and I'm leaving. To hold it together. I'm leaving. I can't. Wait, I don't think I made the right decision. <laughs> I think I just made two big wrong decisions in a row now. Uh, I don't know what's right or wrong. I can't tell. This, this, this is m messing with me. There's no right choice. There's no right choice. I swear this is, this is two impossibles. That doesn't make it possible, man. God damn it. Oh no! We're gonna need to pour one out for season three. The footage got corrupted when updating OBS. No idea how that even happened, but I guess it's not that big of a deal considering this season doesn't even build off of season two or build into season four, like at all. Pretty disappointing. I want my 10 hours back. The Walking Dead Telltale series also had a spin off of the original game. It builds off of the Walking Dead comics detailing Michonne. It has nothing to do with the previous seasons I explained, and the story is not that good in my opinion. It's also really short, so I'm not. I'm not gonna bother explaining it, but it was like averagely fun. The season finale, boys. This is a once in a lifetime experience and we have reached the end. There are only four episodes this time, but they are about twice as long as the other games. So let's finish this up. Episode one starts with me and six year old AJ in a car looking for food. What else is new? Me and AJ find a house that is filled with food and supplies. Too bad though, it never lasts. Oh shit. That is such a dick move. I should have killed those assholes. Oh shit! No! Kill him! 
There we go, okay. Beautiful, beautiful shit. Beautiful shit, come on. Over here. We gotta save AJ. Damn, AJ! Take the handbrake off. Let's get going. Oh, we're just gonna be coasting. Oh my lord, man. Oh, that's right in my face. Thank you. Dude, how are we gonna get these? Oh, shit! Oh, no. Bro, we need to break this front window out. Go! Dude, we are going so fast through the woods. We're crashing. We are crashing. Oh, damn. Yo. I awake in a bed with duct tape around my wrist and AJ missing. Walking around the abandoned school, I encounter two people while looking for AJ. Marlin and Ten. Marlin is the leader around here and he tells me that AJ is where the music is. Whatever that means. I do find AJ with a guy named Lewis. Marlin comes back and asks for my help to take out some walkers. And this is where I get introduced to the new combat mechanics. I got it, I got it, I got it. I'm gonna stun their ass. Bam! Boom! And then just straight up kill. Bam! Let's go. Hello. Hello. Cutting rope. See ya. Easy. Damn, look at this goober. Goodbye. Jesus. Goodbye. After a successful trip, the night approached. To blow off some boredom, we play cards. It's mostly like whoever has the highest card asks the lowest card a question. So some questions get thrown around, it gets depressing, so it's time to sleep. Next day rolls around and Marlin needs some help with food. I go hunting with Lewis in a scene. We don't get much, so we need to improvise. The house that blew up still had some scraps left, so we headed out of the safe zone to pick it up. But of course, we get an unexpected visit. If this man fires a shot, Wait, if this dude fires a shot, the zombies are gonna come down on us, so he's not gonna do that. You, you ask, ask too many, too many questions, questions, buddy. I don't like it. I wouldn't be scared about getting fired on, to be honest. There's too many, there's too many freaking zombies around. If he fires, dude, he's good as dead as well. Uh, attack him. Yeah! Don't fire the gun. Don't fire the gun. Don't fire the gun, please. Yes. Oh, well, he fired the gun. <laughs> Let's go, Clem! Let's go! Nah, dude, this world's unforgiving. He, the only reason he didn't shoot there was because of the zombies. I, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Going back to the school, most people were excited, except Brody. Apparently, there's some past history we will soon know about, but for now, we are in the dark and just enjoy the food while we can. Soon, the sun set and it was time to sleep. But I wake up during the night and start hearing some commotion. Brody and Marlin are arguing in the basement, talking about how Abel was a part of some bigger group that they already had problems with before. They traded two people for their own safety and everything falls apart in seconds. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Does, ten, does ten know? Know this ten doesn't know because Marlin was so ashamed of what damn this is the leader wow wow uh yeah what the fuck am I supposed to do he's gonna blame it on he's gonna blame it on me I guarantee it he's gonna blame it on me and he's gonna lock me down here wow what a bitch oh uh, run so why can't I run why can't I run just Grab the flashlight. Stop, stop, stop. Oh my gosh. No. You couldn't have gone there out, out there any faster. He would have abandoned you too. Yes, he would have. Come on. Come on, come on, Violet. Come on, Violet. Yes, let's go. Let's go. W Marlin friend right there. Come on, Marlin. Sid from Toy Story. Come on, dude. Don't make this be a repeat of that one girl in the motel. Please. You can say, but not as our leader. Yeah, Please. absolutely. Whoa! What? AJ! What the fuck? Oh my. Yo, wrong time to, to listen to my advice, man. Wrong damn time. Oh, that was no protector. That that was that was just murder, man. That was pure, unadulterated 
murder. Episode 2 is a heavy hitter and I definitely make some questionable choices. We wake back up in our room and I get real with AJ. I tell him he's a murderer because guys, there is no sugarcoating it. But it's gonna be a struggle to convince the others that he wants to atone. Visiting Marlin's grave, AJ tries to plead his case but it doesn't convince enough people and ultimately we get kicked out. Not making it too far, me and AJ run into Abel again and a returning star. <sighs> Wait a minute. Is that f***ing Lily? God. Or whatever her name is? Clementine. Oh my god! Yo, it's Lily! Oh my gosh! You probably don't remember me. I do! Lily? Yo, we kicked your fuck. Oh, we kicked your ass out! Lily! Yo! You were such a bitch. I'm not even gonna lie. I tell her I'm not ratting out the kids because I'm a noble goat. Running away from Lily, AJ gets grazed by a shotgun and he gets clocked out. This is when we meet another character, James. They ain't stopping. I gotta go again? What? Dude, I was spamming circle. What the f***? What in the hell? was that he is what we call an ex whisperer or just weird with extra steps but he ran with a group of people who walked among the herds which sounds kind of badass but he helps me patch up aj as best as we can and then he escorts me back to the school they accept me back for now since the school could be attacked any day once aj's getting taken care of i fall asleep again me and violet go over fortification plans to get ready for the raid and the plan starts to go into motion i check up on everything that looks good again after a hard day we play some cards and everything is just peaceful people go their separate ways and i tag along with violet i swear i must be blind to advances because i didn't even know we were flirting until the last dialogue sequence you know i choose to go along with violet because i'm not gonna lie she seems like a positive influence and she's kind of cool but it gets interrupted fast look out for each other that's probably the best Whoa! <laughs> jesus christ omar our cook he was excellent all right, it's time. You're not getting through that. There's... Okay. A dude with one arm was able to get through that. Are you serious? Lee would have been heartbroken knowing he taught you all the wrong things. You can't. Nah, nah no, he wouldn't. Lee would be proud. Turned out like this. Lee would be right, proud. Lee? I am just like him. And if he saw me now, he'd be proud of who yes, I am. Yes, he would be. Plus. Don't listen to her. Don't listen to her. No! Come on. Ten, you tr... Oh, Dude, my monster's gonna spill if I do that again. Good shit! Yeah, bitch! Yeah! Get out of here! Missing his left arm and left eye. Talk to him, AJ! Yeah! Batter up! Ooh! Riding the jewels. Nice try. Muhammad Ali. Oh, fuck! Well, Violet, Vi uh, Violet I guess. I'm sorry, Lewis. I've treated you like shit, to be honest. Hey, man. What's going on? Jeez. Jeez. And that's it. Okay. That was actually a fire-ass episode. Episode 3 has a lot of back and forth. It starts off with me interrogating Abel in front of AJ, but I mean, I can't really hold back. He spills where he's camped out at, and in turn, I have to mercy kill him, but the fucking Telltale notification absolutely ridiculed me. AJ looks to you for guidance in this yeah. world. That is so sweet. You just tortured him. <laughs> okay. You don't have to call me out like that. It was time to get my damn revenge, but we needed a little help. I pulled the group together and formulated a plan. Using Willie's newfound love for bombs, he makes one called Mitch's Masterpiece, which is truly amazing. Since the Delta's camped on a boat, we plan to throw the bomb in the boiler room so when the boat starts up, the bomb will too. Only one problem. How do we get in? Using James Walker power, we draw an entire herd into lay down assault and we sneak through it, which worked wonders actually so now we continue as planned to rescue our friends planting the bomb in the boiler room and uh getting caught and locked in a cell which was not part of the plan if you can believe it i meet face to face with lily again and much like the last time we leave hating each other even more she then takes aj to persuade him i break out to pursue lily but i didn't know aj already had that shit on lockdown good shit james let's go it's time to make my move yeah sacked baby minus five yards uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, she is pissed now. Oh, no! No! Come on! 
kill her! Fuck! AJ, please! Stab her in the leg! Yeah! Damn, she was still able to kick with that? That's mad impressive. Do it again! Oh! Shoot her! Shoot her! Let's go, AJ! Let's go! And kill us her, kill her ass. There's no way Lily was gonna be like, oh yeah, we'll comply, we'll go. Like that's not gonna happen. That is just not, no, that's not how this works. All right, dude, that's the end? Oh my gosh. Dude, my hands are sweating right now. Episode four, the finale to end all finales. The opening minutes are just constant QTEs to get off the now blown up ship. I get to the cave where James goes off on me for making AJ into a quote unquote killer. I mean, have your opinions, but this ain't the same world anymore. I mean, we can't abide by the same morals against people who take what they want thinking there aren't any consequences to it because it's about survival. But hey, that's just me. Anyway, I actually convinced James to see it my way and in turn he sacrificed sacrificed himself. During that whole thing, I also tell AJ I trust in his ability to make the hard decisions. We escape the cave and eventually make it to a bridge with a giant hole in it. During this, Tennessee's sister emerges with like 10 different bite marks, which means she's got nothing to lose. She tries to convince Ten to kill himself to join her in the afterlife. And it really doesn't go according to plan. No, Ten, no, 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 no. She's gonna kill you, man! Oh, Jesus! Clem. Oh, my God! Yo! That is... That is... That is disgusting. I don't think I'll be able to get, get across, man. I'm gonna be honest. This is gonna be one painful-ass jump. AJ, I gave you trust. I get AJ. Don't do it! Don't do it! No! AJ! AJ and Violet make it across, but soon need to split up. Me and AJ try to escape, but Clem repeats the same mistake as Lee. Oh, come on. No! No, no this can't be a repeat. This is not going to be a repeat. No! No, 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 no. This is not good. Oh my fucking God, there's no way. There's no way. I, I'm not even paying attention right now. I'm just... You've got to be fucking kidding me. AJ helps me into James's old barn where we are trapped and Clem's about to turn. And it's time to trust in AJ's ability to make the hard decisions. One of the first things this is, I ever taught you. Oh my gosh. You need to make this sure is really smell you, so hitting deep. I know this you is can. so sad to watch. <laughs> Genuinely, I'm... There has been like so many tears just falling out of my eyes man I don't want to see this I don't want to know where this goes it's gonna end the same way season one did and that shit fucking killed me <laughs> I can't I don't know what to say dude I don't know what to say I'm just sitting here sobbing I never I never want to experience something like this again no way no way no <laughs> I'm with you too, AJ. Don't worry. Dude, my... I can't see. I, I... God. AJ, you have to kill me. Don't let me become one of them. Be a good boy. I don't think I've cried this much ever in my life. Oh. I don't want to see this. I can't look, bro. I can't even look. I can't look. God damn. A flashback happens and it shows the events that happened at the ranch that led to Clem to get AJ back, which brought round two of tears. Back to the present day, we switch to playing as AJ and go about his day at Texas 2. Then the tears come back for round three to finish off the rest of the series and obtaining the platinum. No, no. Whoa. I'm done, bro. I'm I... You're out of bed. You're walking. I don't know what to say. And, and you have wood arm legs. Crutches. Shh. Crutches. He fucking cut off her leg, I of found your course. Head. It was in the creek down by the shack. I thought I wouldn't get it, but Rosie jumped right round in. Round three, bro. Door. Round three. They're coming Sorry. back. Yeah, Come there's just surprises all something. around, isn't there? 
God, I fucking hate surprises. Oh my God, she's alive, bro. I can't even believe it. Of course. Why didn't I even think of that? Of course he could have just cut off the leg. So, what do you think? And he's got the tire swing. I, I don't know if my queen. tear ducts can produce any more tears. And it's amazing me because it is. Yeah, I know, man. God, I just want to sit and relish Second, in this right now. Already? I can't believe it. Taste I can't that? Believe it. I can't believe it. No, hey, Rosie. Oh, Rosie's so sweet. Look, Clem's even comfortable around her now. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, wait, this is such a sick ass, like, credit scene. Still not bitten, team. Here's all the people. The Walking Dead, Telltale. Jeez. <sighs> Let's place this hat, man. <sighs> I'm all done. What a journey, bro. What a journey. <laughs> This, how did I not play this any sooner, man? Oh my gosh. And that's it. I should get the platinum as well. <laughs> this fucking game just toyed with me. It, man. Oh. Moving into the VR side of PlayStation, but this ain't my first rodeo. I've recently developed quite an obsession with Beat Saber, and at points I just felt hopeless with that game. I, bro! Just stop. Please. Oh my gosh. I, right, dude, I'm not even five minutes into the song. Oh my gosh. Just, just stop. God damn it. Look at that, 79.4. I had a 2 million score though. Bro, my arms feel like jelly right now. But we aren't here to play stupid games where we hit blocks. We're playing a real man's game, Walking Dead Onslaught, baby. Coming in at a 5 out of 10, 1 playthrough, and a 10 to 15 hour platinum. This game, kind of mid, but there was some fun to be had. Also, I have to apologize for my mic quality in the first half of this. It actually sounds horrendous, bearable, but horrendous. And the PSVR 1 only records in 720p on certain games, so I had to zoom in. So I tried everything with that, so I'm sorry, but I mean, I, I didn't know what else to do but with that let's get started we begin in a tutorial area where we learn how to swing a weapon and shoot a gun and i don't know if you guys are aware but i'm a bitch when it comes to horror games so much so that even the tutorial almost made me quit oh damn if you want to survive the walk around stuff, you can bash doors and other objects in the environment i can bash the door. bam oh yeah <laughs> okay, I've realized- <gasps> Are you gonna spawn in front of my face again? Let's test oh my gosh. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I don't think I'll ever grow out of this fear. <gasps> Moving on, we finish the tutorial. So first, we need to play the story mode that consists of seven 20-minute chapters and an extremely creepy Rick Grimes. I have people to protect. That includes you. Before even showing up to Alexandria, we need to finish the prologue. Give me the wrench, dude. Trusty wrench. Oh yeah, this feels way better. BAM! Well, let me figure out how to turn. BAM! BOOM! Oh, oh, that just feels so much nicer. Another trophy? Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, I'm swimming in it. I don't even know what happened. Now at home base, we get introduced to the second thing you can do in this game, scavenge missions. In order to go on these, you need to select an area and create a loadout in the armory to take with you. Discovering a new weapon in the armory also unlocks a trophy, so that's a W. So this game has a lot of multi-pop trophies, meaning like three pop at a time because a lot are tied to mission completion. The first time this happens is when we go on our first scavenge mission. Our earliest trophy is to just beat it and then not to take any damage from the herd wall that chases you. To put into perspective, it's it's kind of like the Fortnite storm. After completing a scavenge mission, you can earn enough food to recruit a new survivor. Of course, we earn a trophy for our first. We do one more thing before making progress in the story mode. Upgrades are a heavy element this game utilizes from weapons to buildings. They each play a different part in gameplay. It sounds like I'm doing an ad read. I upgraded my first building, not only increasing my health, but earning a beautiful trophy too. We need to play the story on the hardest difficulty as it's tied to a ton of trophies. So we begin on chapter one. Come here, bitch. Who wants some of this? Who wants... Who wants some of Daryl Dixon? 
Ugh. I'm living my fantasies right now. I'm a king. I'm a demon. I'm a gremlin. No. No. Fuck you all. No. Fuck. Oh. Yes, sir. That's how we do it. Double trope. Okay, no, I do think it's just like triple popping or something. There's no way. After the first mission is done, we get enough materials to upgrade our first weapon. The only way to progress during the story is to recruit more survivors, and the only way to recruit more survivors is to play scavenge missions. Which means we head back to supply collecting and earning a trophy for finding a supply cache. In that same run, I choke out 30 zombies for another trophy. What can I say? This game offers different zombie types, which is kind of cool, but they still die the same, but this time I get a trophy for it. I now have enough survivors to start the next chapter, so I complete that. Fuck! Dude, this is so dumb. My freaking controller keeps getting, like, like, stuck. Y'all don't scare me. Y'all don't scare me! Get thrown into the freight container. Alright, motherfuckers. We're gonna have a civil time about this, okay? I'm gonna... I'm gonna stab this dude in the head. In. The. Head. And it's not gonna count, watch. Okay, never mind, that was actually cool. Alright, three zombies, that's, that's no problem. <laughs> that's no problem at all. That's just, honestly just what I was hoping was three zombies coming out of that crate. You guys making out back there? Give me some! Had to move. Oh, fucking, fucking. Oh, here comes the music again. I'm running! I'm running! Do I need to bash this? Oh, I do. Oh, just close my- Oh! My god, I just fucking fell. I just almost completely fell, man. That scared the hell out of me. That was it? And that's it. Okay. Uh, holy shit, man. I need a breather. I need a th three trophies again? Oh. During scavenge missions, you have the ability to do requisitions, basically just side quest stuff for the survivors you picked up, often telling you to pick up something during your scavenge run. There are a few trophies tied to this, but they require a little bit more grinding. But I did complete one survivor's request and fully upgraded the town hall, which in turn got me the trophy Alexandria X Incommunicado. Back to the story, we make quick work of chapter three. I knew oh, damn. Oh, this thing feels nice and it's one handed. Oh, I think I'm gonna like this weapon. Look at me. Ah! Ah! Whoa! What the hell? Wabang! 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 Okay, whatever. Can I really not? Oh, are you kidding me? Okay, now I'm gonna double it. Watch. Ah! Yeah! Ooh! That felt good. Name and registration, please. Name and registration! Clobber him. Clobber him. Kiss him. Stab! Oh, shit. Oh! Oh, uh, okay. Wow! Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go! Okay. Uh, here's what we're gonna do. I don't know. Just, just play. Play, play the bitch game. Play the bitch game. Like, like, they're like bowling pins. They're like bowling pins. Throw that strike. Or miss. <laughs> it's over for you. Ah, damn it. My, my tracking. Dude, the... My fucking... Screw you. Oh, that's a trophy. I was looking. I was trying to look in my room and see if I'm lined up with my two trophies. Three trophies. Dope. Still knocking out the scavenge missions, we get to 10 survivors, which grants us another trophy. During chapter 4, we get acquainted with TNT. Well, sticks with TNT taped to them. If you kill 5 zombies with one explosion, you get the trophy Survival Instincts. Yuck. Then that finishes up chapter 4. Back at base, I collect enough materials to fully upgrade my first weapon. Yes, let's fully upgrade. Let's fully upgrade the knife, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at this bad boy. This is looking nice. Again, heading back into these scavenge missions, during the end of some of them, you need to hold off until a van arrives. Once the van shows up, you don't actually have a set amount of time to leave, so you can just stay there and loot if you want. If you're able to stay there for three minutes, you will earn a trophy. Pretty sure there's a trophy here to survive three minutes after the van has arrived. So that's what I'm gonna do, I think. I'm killing so many right now. It's kind of awesome. Okay, 
Okay, three minutes now. I gotta survive this. I just gotta keep stabbing, man. That's all I gotta do. Yes! 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 Victory kill. Of course, it had to pick up in tracking. Screw you, man. I still don't have enough survivors to start chapter five. So yes, we go back to do more missions. During the end of one, I run into a new enemy type and you guessed it, we get a trophy for killing him for the first time. Now we can move on to chapter five. Whoa, hello. Oh my gosh. Why can't I move? Get the fuck off of me. They came out of nowhere, I, I swear. One second there was five of them and the next there was 20. Uh oh. Oh god. Oh god, boys. Do the whirlwind technique. Whirlwind technique. I can't. Wreck. I'm stuck on something. Okay, that actually kind of worked. How do they even get him hung up there? Like, that looks like it takes so much work for what? Is it almost time for me to be done with this chap? <gasps> How am I even alive? Oh no. Now, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh my god. Alright. Uh. Um. <laughs> Come on! Touch this shit! Yeah, good luck! Go! Go, 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 go! Get off of me, get off of me, get off of me! Go! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh! <laughs> that was so stressful! That was so stressful, dude! Oh my gosh. Back into the last of the scavenge missions, I kill 1193 walkers for a trophy that's just easily obtained normally. Once finished with that run, I earn enough survivors to start and finish chapter six for another two trophies. Boom! Da! Da! Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I keep hitting my mic because my face is so itchy. Okay, there we go. I hit like all of them, which may or may not have been a bad decision. I don't know yet. We'll see if we get uh, a death screen. You game and your fucking. Let's spawn some zombies behind them for fun. Piss me off! See, now they've moved in and now they're gonna be such a pain in the ass. No fucking way! Nah, 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 nah. Y Fuck you! I'm not missing. Like, genuinely, this girl is just fucking bulletproof. Why? Fuck this. Fuck you. Who wants some? Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. That's what happens when you mess with me! Oh great, I wonder what's in all of these freaking sheds. Is that it? Okay. We out! We out, baby! Get me out of here! Woo! The technique! The technique is unmatched! Keep going! Yes! It's this. Woo! Okay. Fuck you! Fuck you! Let's go! Let's go, baby! Oh... A great place to live? Hell no it isn't. Hell no. Screw that place. Moving on, we have reached the final chapter and you wouldn't believe what we had to do to unlock it. But upon completing chapter 6, the last chapter, we unlocked the final scavenge area. So I knocked both of them out and the last one we earned a trophy for completing all of them. And completing all of a certain person's quest along with having a fully upgraded clinic. Starting up chapter 7, the finale, during it I got my last weapon, a knife knuckle buster thing. Oh, what the hell? Knuckle knife? Oh, this is kind of sweet, actually. Fuck it. Bam. Then we finish up the game, earning four trophies in the process. Final chapter. <coughs> Damn. <coughs> wow. Hold on. Ah! All right. Chapter seven, the promise. The final chapter on veteran. Veteran sucks ass cheeks. I'm, I I can't I can't hold you. Oh, oh my God! You made me fucking squeal like Mickey Mouse right there. All right now now a shitload of zombies are gonna be here, aren't they? Time to go. Never mind. Time to go. Fix the gen. Oh, there's a generator in here. Wait, why can't she fix it? This lady has done nothing but order me around. Are those microwaves? Why do you need four of them? Okay, hold out, hold out. Oh, there's no time limit. All right, looks like I'm about to do a whole lot of killing. I'm a natural born killer. Ah, you bitch. Ah. <laughs> Come on, bitches. Will you just die? Making me break my back here. Pause. All right, let's do this. Oh, uh, no, no. The top, my, my forehead itches. 
My forehead. I can't get it because this big ass headset. I don't want to fight him. I don't want to fight him. I don't want to fight him. Oh, it's a hard pass. It's a hard pass. Oh, <laughs> thank God. Thank God. That was like a hundred of them. I'm good. I I could. I'm good on that. Left. I'll pass. Are we done though? Yes. Chapter seven. No perfect plans. Whew. Yeah, baby. World keeps spinning. Why am I so short? Oh, hey, Rick. Hey, Rick. Hey, Michonne. You're so cr- Oh, my God. Hello. I quickly just booted up the first chapter again and played it on novice to earn a trophy for replaying a chapter. Once that's completed, I recruited the max amount of survivors within Alexandria getting another trophy. Since we don't have to worry about the story anymore, it's just straight scavenge missions and playing the late game ones, you get a ton of materials. So I play a few of those and I'm able to fully upgrade every structure. This popped three trophies related to buildings and upgrades. Speaking of upgrades, the next five out of the six trophies needed for the platinum are upgrade related. They just require you to upgrade the structures which we already did and complete all npc requisitions which you can only complete one every run the first trophy we earn is to finish all of hazel's requests and that run actually granted us enough materials to fully upgrade our entire armory i'm pretty sure we just have enough now to get the last upgrade yes we do and that is everything i believe this is the last one upgrades BAM! YES! I don't have to do those long ass scavenge missions anymore. I can just do the short ones now. Thank gosh, man. Thank gosh. Then legit, the next three trophies all require me to do the same thing I've been doing for like four hours now. Finishing all requisitions. So I would go into the easiest mission, find the thing that I need, then get out in like two minutes. So I quickly finished up those three trophies. Which leaves us with only one. Tainted meat. We need to get a kill with every weapon, which isn't too bad, but the trophy is being very literal here. There are weapons you can find in supply caches that you cannot obtain in the armory. There are six of them, and when I finally decided to go for the trophy, I only needed one more. The hatchet. And then the platinum would be mine. Okay, what's in door number one? Hatchet, please. Worth the extra time. God fing damn it. I, I'm getting I'm getting a hatchet here, dude. I'm manifesting this right now. I'm gonna get a goddamn hatchet, and this will be, this will be it. This is what I came here for. This, this well, isn't a hatchet. Hatchet, hatchet, hatchet. I can't believe these are still here. Fuck, man. Hatchet, hatchet, hatchet. Ah! All good, all good. I'm, a, I'm a man. I'm a I man. Around more often. God. Fuck. Hatchet, hatchet, hatchet. This is what I came here for. Yes. Oh, this is it. This is it. I, I've not gotten a kill with this weapon. I've never even seen this weapon in my life. Of course this is a hatchet. I'm fucking stupid. I kept thinking it, it was like a meat cleaver or something. Some super long thing from like Dark Souls. Oh my gosh, yes. I just need to get a kill with this thing. And that, that's my platinum. That is my fucking platinum. Let's go. Come here, bitch. Clean swing. Clean swing. Boom. Yes. Fuck you! Yes! Platinum, baby! Oh, let's go! I'm done with this game! After Onslaught was over, I'm not gonna lie, I was relieved, if you couldn't tell. But it's because horror games in VR actually mess with me. Like, I don't know what it is, but I think I'll be the first person to actually shit bricks if I continue to play. But I'll be damned if I let a measly little VR game get to me. The next game would have been Walking Dead Saints and Sinners 1, but I've already platinumed it about 7 months ago. So we just jumped straight into the second installment, Saints and Sinners Retribution. Coming in at a 4 out of 10 difficulty, 2 minimum playthroughs, and 30 hours to obtain the platinum. Providently, I can upload my Saints and Sinners 1 save into Saints and Sinners 2, carrying over weapons, materials, and recipe progress. So we get a little boost, but it doesn't really matter because the difficulty doesn't lie in how hard the game is itself. But how long long I can last without crying in a corner. I have earned three trophies before just dropping the game, but enough chit chat, let's begin. We play as a dude named The Tourist and he's kind of the goat, but coming back to our old base three months after the previous game, things aren't looking too well. I met with someone called The Pond King who says he will facilitate a trade network with me, but I have to retrieve some double A's for him first. So I head into Hotel Eau Claire during the night, which provides better loot, and I earn a trophy for searching 10 items off dead bodies. Then we begin searching for some batteries. Not gonna lie, bro. I'm terrified. 
Oh my gosh, that, that is just so creepy. That is too creepy for me. Can these Am I too short for these zombies or something? Why can't they see me? Oh! What was that? Dude, I'm sweating fucking bullets here. Oh! What the hell? Why? Why are there zombies coming from there? I screamed like an actual little bitch. Bro, it's just so dark in here, man. I'm not a fan. I'm gripping my controller for dear life right now. It's fine. You know what? I'll just walk right in the middle of this room. I got big nuts. Balls of steel, some would say. Oh! What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? 3076, 3076, 3076, 3076. Where the fuck is that noise coming from? Third. Fuck. The things I do for platinums. The things I do. Oh, I don't want to go down there. I don't want to. Just go. Just go. Just go. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Dude, I thought that was a freaking person. God damn it, I'm a bitch. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, huh, huh. Hold on. Give me a second. Pick it up. Pick it up. Innocent people. Oh my god. I don't want to fight you. I don't want to fight you. No way. What does that mean? Huh? Oh! My, 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 my something, my something. You fucking my gun, dude. I just flung the shit out of my gun. What the fuck? Get me the hell out of here. Holy shit. Oh. You fuckers. I'll kill you all! Can I- I- I, I want to get out of here. I want to get out of here. I want my mommy! I want my mommy! I think I've escaped. Get me out of here. Please don't be a jump scare. Please don't be a jump scare. Oh, There's so many! What the fuck was that? What was that? The axe- the axe man what? I don't know what that trophy was. Since I got a silencer, the next trophy I earned was to get 15 kills with a gun that had one while being undetected. I head back to home base and come across something beautiful. Oh! How does this- how- how do I stab? how did I stab? Yo! Oh, punch outs! Damn, that felt nice. These things kinda suck, but... I've been practicing. I've been playing my, my Creed. Moving on with the story, we just need to dodge a herd and a bunch of people with guns. During it, I scavenged 10 items only found within the night. I still don't know what those are. I picked up a couple rats, if that means anything. I don't know why I tried to do that. I got contacted by a group called the Descendants. They are like double agents for the tower, the big bad guys in this game. They secretly want to overthrow it. Before I let them plead their case, I gun them down. I'm gonna kill all these people. I think this is a trophy. I don't want to just do this for no reason. Oh my god. Ow. Ow. You guys are a really good shot. Boink. <laughs> yes. Get dissed. Get. Oh, no. Get dissed. Reloading my save, the group tells me they need bolt cutters. So I head to Bourbon Street and meet one of the exile leaders, Patricia. For the bolt cutters, I need to find three dead rats, one egg timer, and five surgical scissors. They're all easy enough to get besides the scissors. We need to travel to a hospital surprisingly overrun by the tower. So to fuel my hunger for murder, I kill them all. And my compensation is a trophy. Then we continue on to the hellhole that is the hospital. Think happy thoughts. Think happy thoughts. Nothing bad is gonna happen. Uh, there's tower soldiers in here. Okay, maybe something bad's gonna happen. Oh! oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! No! Holy shit! Oh! Okay, yeah, I'll go downstairs. Yeah, I'll go downstairs. I see them. I see them through the freaking crack in the door. Oh no, no, no! Okay. No balls. No balls. Oh wait, there's only one. Oh. <gasps> yes! Yes! I'm out. I'm out. Uh, that sh uh, that's enough, I think. We did it! We did it! 
Yes! We go back to Patricia to get the boat cutters, and I decide to earn myself another trophy here for rubbing walker guts on myself in stealth during the night. In order to secure enough firepower to take out the tower and Garrick, we need to make a few calls. I head back into school grounds and meet up with the Whistler. She says she has a plan, but it requires a favor. I reluctantly take it because I hated this school in the first game, but I push forward. During the end of the area, I met Matthew, but we didn't have any time for chat. Oh! 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 Good- Goodbye? Goodbye. Uh, wow, he just disappeared into a different reality. That caused a lot of noise, so I ended up getting in a shootout and earning a trophy for 20 laser sight kills. Uh... Oh! 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 Where'd you come from? Bro. Leave me alone. The world is against me right now. I go to the library and pick up the book the Whistler requested. I return to her, giving her the bad news, but also a cool book. Why, why can't I say book right now? Giving her a cool book and earning a trophy for that. There we go. Also earning a trophy for completing all of her requests, which are just side missions. Finally, we are out of that place. I go to confront the Pawn King for setting me up with Garrick. We make up and I give him a photo I found in the beginning of the game. Turning it into him also nets us a trophy. Oh, photo finish. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pawn King fills us in that Father Carter has gone missing around Hotel Eau Claire. So I head there and find him drowning in booze. He said he needs me to get his mom's ashes from a hidden speakeasy. In turn, he will hear what I have to say. Once in, an alarm will trip, and I need to shoot all of the speakers around to turn it off. Yo. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Okay, hold on. Come here, motherfuckers! Rawr! Oh. Oh! Hey, relax. Relax. There's one. There's another one. It's oh! Whoa! I still hear some. Bro, watch out for the zombie right by you. Now watch out for me. There's an. Bro, there's actually so many. Yes! These don't go to 11. Let's go. That's another trophy done. Oh, there's a cigar. Hold on. Where, where did I put the lighter? Give me the lighter. This is a job well done, baby. I get the cross filled with his mom's ashes and return to Carter. After his long spiel, he basically wants me to kill him. I convince him otherwise and I get two trophies for it. Yes! Yes! Goodbye and thank you. Yeah! You're welcome! Dude, I turned over a new leaf. <laughs> yeah, give me that bitch. F you. We now have the firepower and the location of Garrick, so heading back to Eclair, we entered a wine cellar. Just when I thought the areas couldn't get any worse, we venture into hell itself. Fuck with me. I dare you. I feel like I'm in the uh, tunnel entrance of Blight Town. You know that one bonfire is in Dark Souls? Oh! 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 Hey, people! Ah! Ah! Yeah! Ah! You! Ah! Yeah! Ah! Oh! What the hell even was that? I was making a joke that this game was gonna have sewers, and here we are. Oh! Guys, you wanna know what I see when uh, we turn off this flashlight? Literally nothing. What are these areas? Why is there so much loot? Oh no. What's gonna happen? I can't lie, dude. I'm fucking terrified. Oh my gosh. What are you having me climb? I am stupid. I am stupid. I'm stupid. I'm so dumb. Fuck, stop jamming. Yep. Flank this freaking bullet in your mouth, bitch. Dude, I am so not prepared for this. Like, actually, I, I, I only have one weapon. I don't have the grenade launcher. If this thing jams one more time, come on. There's the grenade I threw, but for, didn't pull the pin on it somehow. I was giving it everything I got. Watch, now, now it's gonna pull. Okay. After we get out of the sewers, it's just a straight gunfight all the way to Garrick until we make it to his very underwhelming, kind of stupid boss fight. Okay. 
I'm ho never what the hell is this? If ever there was one. Why do I have this? Oh! Yo, this motherfucker's fast! You fucking bitch. You know what? Just kill me. I'm good. I'll fucking pass this. This is fucking stupid. What? What? That's some bullshit! You're an asshole. Come on! Why? Why does it. Bro! Come on! I hate this gun. I'm ready! I'm ready! You're gonna come right there! And you're gonna come hard. Come on, I got both corners on lockdown. Of fucking course you come from there, you asshole! Come here, bitch. Fuck you! Lick my nuts! Lick my nuts! Raw, baby! I head back to confront Sonny where I convinced his daughter to not kill him, but I actually wanted him to die not knowing there was a missable trophy tied to this until it was too late. So we're gonna have to beat like the whole game again. Yay. But at least we earned a trophy for completing all of his requests. Anyway, we need to secure some guns for the descents, but they get bodied. We need to fight. Oh! Oh, what? Once leaving on the skiff, I earned a trophy for completing all of their requests. As Mama prepares to ring the bells to bring about the end of us, we need to prep. I get a lovely surprise back at home base, which forces me to whip out the chainsaw, baby. Oh! Oh, shit! Yo! You're in my domicile! Uh, Uzi time. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Get ready, bitches. I'm ready for you! Get over here! Whoa, hey. Oh, yes. Nola, Nola Chainsaw Massacre. That's exactly what I am, bitch. After that massacre, it was time for the final assault on the tower. Oh, oh my god, okay. What is going on there? Oh my god. Yo. This thing is awesome. Okay, well, there's a lot of floors. I want the top one. Boink. Boink. Take me to the top, baby. Damn, dog. Oh, yo. Oh my gosh. Am I gonna have to climb that? That looks like something I have to climb. Just keep climbing. Woo! Why, 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 why did I pick up my backpack? That killed me? There's no way that killed me. Oh, oh my gosh. Once at the top, we meet Mama who basically hits me with an ultimatum. Stop ringing the bells or keep them going. I stop them and in turn Mama, uh, yeah. And that's another trophy for we have completed the game. But this is only the start. There are a lot of gun and melee weapon related trophies we still need to earn. I got 15 kills with an Uzi and 15 kills with the esteemed mortal. Basically a saw blade baseball bat that really sucks to use. Next trophy requires me to collect all recipes. After I beat the game, I obtained most of them already, so that trophy was pretty easy to obtain. It just took a little bit. There are armored enemies that, if you can believe, take a lot of bullets to kill, depending on the weapon, of course. I need to kill five of them alive and five of them who have been zombified. This trophy, like many, required at least twice as many kills before it even popped. Then I got to have some fun using the grenade launcher. I just needed to kill 11 people with it, which turned into like 40 enemies, but eventually I earned that trophy. Then the two I probably had the worst. First time getting batter up and catch. I needed to hit a grenade out of the air and kill the grenadier with their own grenade. I know I just said grenade like 30 times right there. I apologize, but this turned out to be very, very, very frustrating. JJ, come on, come on. Fuck. <laughs> come on, throw a grenade, throw a grenade at me, throw a grenade at me. Come on, Fuck, dude, you're throwing it right at me here. Where the fuck did that one even go? Come on! Oh, okay, I'm, I'm not re- Oh, f fuck. God damn it! But by a sheer miracle, I was able to get both trophies at the same time. Come on. Come on. Oh, fuck. Yes! Fuck you! Fuck you, bitch! Oh! Yes! Oh! I'm out of here! I'm out of here! I'm out of here! I'm out! I'm out! 
Yes! Back using the grenade launcher, I just need to get 20 kills. Zombies or humans doesn't matter. This trophy says 20, but I needed about 80 before I got it. You see a pattern here? Using the elephant rifle, I get 10 human kills, earning a trophy. Then it was time to take out some anger and punch some people. Bam, 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 bam. Oh my god. Damn. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. I sent that person so high. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so stressful, <coughs> my god, it's like I had, that was a modern day arena over there. And that is the last killing trophy, these are never fun to cover. In the first game, you needed to go through each map and collect these angel statues. Now you need to do this in Retribution, but this time at night. Now this might be a shock to you, but it actually wasn't that bad. Just have a pump action shotgun and that's basically your nightlight. So I was able to get this done relatively easy. Now the big post game grind, exile footholds. These consist of several requests from people on separate maps. Once you fulfill their needs, you get a reward and it's no five bucks. When you complete three requests and establish your first foothold, you get a trophy for it. But we need to do this 24 more times for the last trophy we can obtain in this playthrough. I didn't record most of this grind just because it took like nine hours of pure looting and I needed to lock in. And guys, after this, I don't think I'm scared of the night anymore. It's just crazy how much confidence I get when I have a 12 gauge. Anyway, I come to an end of my exile footholds. This trophy better not bug, bro. This took like eight no, hours to today. Please. Yes. 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 Let's go, dude. Let's go. Oh, what's in here? Don't care. Damn, wait a minute. A new playthrough was inbound as I missed two trophies and the other couldn't be earned at the same time as the last trophy we just got. Before beginning though, I'm about to put y'all on, so listen. Press new game and then import this code into your save and now you have practically unlimited materials. Wish I would have known that sooner, but whatever. And I know you guys might not like it, but I proved myself here and I don't think I'd be able to stomach another 10 hours of this. Breezing through the story, I make it back to Whistles where I had to light her up. You on the prowl? Oh. Yes! <laughs> there we go. Nice. And every exile leader must be killed by yours truly. To do this, just run up to each person during the night and pop them right in the head. Leave and do it again to the next unlucky soul. Once at the last one, oh, I think you know what happens. Yes! Oh, let's go! It didn't bug! Well, it kind of did. Okay, it really did bug, but let's go! Let's go, man. Oh, finally, one more trophy. Let's get this done. Then the big finale. Going back through the sewers and fighting Axeman, I confront the Pawn King once more, and this time I make sure he dies by the hand of his daughter, and in my hand, I receive the Platinum Trophy. Uh, don't do it. Don't do it. Yes! Woohoo! Give me the Platinum! Give me the Platinum! Give me the Platinum! Give me the Platinum! Thank you! Yes! New Orleans legend! Get me out of here let's go <sighs> one more game left and it's the shittiest of them all normally i'm happy when i reach the end of a series it's like closing a book for the first time but on the rare occasion you get to the point of a book you just don't want to read it anymore we are at that point here ladies and gentlemen walking dead destinies is notoriously bad that's quite literally the only reason it's popular i think game mill also recognizes this because it's not even listed on their website along with the other record breaker for worst video game of the year rise of kong so this studio doesn't have a good track record but can they win me over no. Either way, coming in at a 1 out of 10 difficulty, 1 playthrough, 2 if you mess up since they don't have episode select, and 10 hours to platinum, thank god for that. So there isn't actually an intro, we just woke up in a hospital. It follows the events of the show but throws in these shitty powerpoint slides that eventually let you make a choice that changes the flow of the story. Cool concept, but they should have let the people at Skybound handle this one. Once we escaped into the parking lot, the first trophy can be obtained here, we just can't get detected. Oh my god, this, that's just like the show. Oh my lord. That looks nothing like Rick, bro. <laughs> Yo, this man. Is he okay? Okay, so I have to. Uh, uh, I think I gotta crouch through this, or like, like stealth through this area. But I don't. Can, can it turn around? Okay, you just gotta turn around. I like how there's just a cloud of smoke. Okay, so I have to sit in a fucking cloud of smoke. For some reason, this works. There's just some fucking fart clouds, I guess. Come on, it's gotta get to that pickup. 
Just come on. Get turn your ass around, motherfucker! God damn it! Okay, I gotta wait till he turns around. Turn around, turn around, bitch. Turn around. Come on. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I did it. Yes, sir. Woo! Damn. All right, we got that. We got that trophy. Thank God. I don't want to keep playing that part. Already first trophy in, and it's annoying. We get put into a tutorial that shows us the super in-depth combat. I'm the fastest spammer in the West. That's what they taught me. I find it hilarious that the stamina bar regens while I'm being grabbed, so... I can just keep repeating this over and over again. After stabbing our first zombie, we get a trophy. Then in the same area, zombies just infinitely spawn, so we can get a trophy to get 10 stab kills in a row. The next area unlocks, and we learn how to do a heavy swing. We need to exhaust our stamina bar, then attack the zombie and do this until we kill it. I go to my police car, and we gotta kill all seven zombies around it for another trophy. Episode 3 has us playing as Glenn. We have a crowbar as a weapon, and we need to get 15 kills with it. That's it. Really felt like I earned that one. During this episode, we need to find all of the skill points located in it for the vast skill tree we get to play around with. Too bad I had to replay this episode three times before the trophy would even pop. Before we finish the level, I collect a grenade and blow up five zombies. Okay, so now I gotta, I gotta kill these walkers with a grenade. Eat that, bitches. Fire in the dead. Cool, <laughs> I guess. We get to the first big decision that changes how the game is played choosing T-Dog or Merle. I choose T-Dog because he's the goat, resulting in a trophy. Switching to Shane, we need to gather some food and also kill 10 walkers without being detected. What? What? Okay, we're good. Wait, I don't I don't understand what just happened there. Going for the kill here. Right through the score. Yes, there we go. Ooh, okay. Thank you, Lord. And that's all for Shane. Back to Rick, we get a little survival instinct cameo. The next seven trophies are also earned in this spot. Daryl will ask for your advice on an expedition. Depending on the response, you will either fail or succeed. No matter what, the choices are fixed. And if you succeed on the call, you get a trophy. Now we want to reload the checkpoint and succeed four more times to earn the trophy plan ahead. Reload the checkpoint once more and choose the bad option five times for the opposite trophies. Still in the same area, there's a crawler that's going to help us get three more trophies. We need to bring our health down to critical levels. This will activate a fight or flight mode. It's random which one you get, so you need to keep getting down to one hit until you get both trophies. Also nice misspell. After both are obtained, just die to get the final trophy in this portion of the map. Moving on to the RV section, we need to save Lori and Carl. But first, I need to kill six walkers with six bullets without reloading. Okay, this, this should be... Okay. One, two, three... Four. Oh, you fucking fuck. Four. Five. Fuck! Six, motherfucker! Still escorting Lori, I chop off 10 heads with a machete. Then we need to keep the RV health above 30%. And then we Dark Souls roll to our pickup truck, finishing Act 1. This is like Dark Souls. Jesus! This is like Dark Souls difficulty. Dark Souls 2. <laughs> yes, another trophy! I mean, hey, at least I'm getting a lot of trophies. At least this isn't hard. In search for Sophia, I chop off 10 heads with a fire axe. I pick up a shotgun right next to me and get four kills without reloading. Finishing up the mission, I'm finally able to earn the trophy learning the ropes to upgrade 10 skills even though I had 13 when I earned it. Playing as Maggie now at the school, I earned quite a few trophies here. One for shooting a screamer in the head while it's screaming, another for killing three crawlers in a row without killing anything else. Switching as Shane now, I made my way to the gymnasium where a sledgehammer is located. I need to get 15 heavy attack kills with it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Fuck. How do you keep doing that? And then that one doesn't... Oh my gosh, man. You, you've got to be kidding me here. Oh, there we go. Blunt force. Just, just... Oh my gosh! Back to Maggie. I need to cover Shane while he fights off waves of walkers. Two trophies can be earned here. One for getting five kills without zooming out of the sniper, and ten kills just normally. Can we just take a second here and just talk about how diverse this trophy list is? I feel like I'm just saying the same sentences, but replacing them with one word. I hate this game. Moving on, I need to fight this crazy boss fight as Shane, and I'm not allowed to use my gun. Okay, well, uh, not if you grab me. Come on! Punk, punk, that was it? 
It took two hits, bro. The last trophy earned in this episode is the big decision where we need to choose to save Maggie or Carl. I chose Maggie because I don't really even know, to be honest. I'm not even paying attention to the story. Glenn reveals the walkers in the barn and Shane freaks out. And during the barn massacre, I can't take any damage. Okay, I gotta keep my distance. Keep my distance, blast some walkers. Take a flash grenade, throw that shit. Boink. Yo, Daryl's kind of going off, actually. Hold on. Yeah, Daryl, be my guinea pig, man. Dude, they're just all going to Daryl, and this is kind of easy now. Okay. Hey, I mean, we're doing good. Daryl's got his bunch. I got mine. It's like training some zombies. Oh, great. There's a big boy. Rage. Oh, I did it. Whoa! Hello. After clearing out the rest of them, Shane and Rick have their final beef. I'm a better father than you, Rick. And now we have to choose. Okay, uh... I'm going to choose Rick, obviously. I'm, uh, come on, dude. What the hell? What the hell do you think I'm gonna pick here? I don't wanna be Shane. Dude, why? In every single game I play, the zombies just always target fucking me. Aim your- I can't press L2! God damn, bro. I'm sitting there spamming L2, but sh shit's not shitting. There we go. That was easy. That was easy, dude. Come on. I, be I beat him. I beat him. Yeah! Wait, that's not it. That's not the trophy I'm looking for. Oh, no. I don't want to... Did I really miss that fight, bro? I did it in literally, like, a minute and 40 seconds. Like, I had to do this fight three more times in order to get the other trophy related to this fight. Beat it in under three minutes. Not because I couldn't beat it within the time, but for some reason, it just didn't pop. Episode 11 is boring as well. The only trophy earned here is the big decision, which I choose to keep the prisoners here. Playing as Herschel next, the only trophy we get in this episode is five headshots in 10 seconds with an AR. Very simple. Episode 13 and 14, we work with Michonne to escape from the biker gang that captured Daryl. When playing as her, I get my final execution with every weapon trophy. Then I just walk out the door and earn a trophy for finishing up Act 3. Act 4 begins with Michonne being guided around by the governor. Much like Episode 3 with Glenn, I need to collect all of the skills points within the area there were only three episode 16 made to suffer really knew what it was getting at with the name because i really did suffer on this one i need to stealth around and if i get caught i have to restart from the last checkpoint sometimes i get caught and i have to wait like 40 seconds before i can continue to play because for some reason the person who caught me needs to run up to you and then they just decide not to sometimes when stealthing around everything i get my katana back and i chop up the governor's daughter with woodbury on high alert i need to escape without becoming broken this just means i can't get to that fight or flight state of my health which is simple to avoid considering nothing can stop my dodge i'm gonna keep it real with you guys i skipped every cutscene because i can't be bothered so i have no idea how i ended up playing as maggie in the storage room but i do know we can earn a trophy here only use firearms the entire mission fuck i wasn't I, i'm Arrgh! why why is it when I get attacked, I just stop aiming instantly, and then I press R2, and that does a heavy attack, but I'm supposed to be aiming in, so it's supposed to fire! There we go. I'm out. Get out of there. Fuck off. Get out of here. Just, I want to be done with this game. God, guns blazing. At least that trophy popped. Thank God, I didn't want to do that mission again. That was really stupid. When fighting Merle as Daryl, I didn't expect this trophy to bug so much. I had to redo it three times. Thankfully, there's a trophy where you can't dodge the entire four-part fight, but it pops in the first part, so it doesn't really matter. The problem was actually beating it. I don't I don't even know what's going on anymore. I'm just whooping ass though. He's stun locked now. Easy fight. Damn. Daryl is built different. Okay, one more part. Oh yeah, doing it. Yeah! Let's go! <laughs> I mean, whatever. Whatever. That should be a trophy. Is another trophy as well. For beating the, the, the mission. Oh, and my game crashed. Fantastic. No, bro. I'm not reporting it. You think they're gonna do anything about... God fucking damn it! What is going on? What? What? What, what just happened? Uh, uh, uh. All right, fuck it. Let's do it a third time then. Whatever. Uh, quick question. Why is his health like, like five times as much now? How does this? E how, how does this bug even happen? 
Like, let me see the code that that shows this. That like randomly his health health like fucking triples. There. Oh, and it still breaks. Please don't crash my game. Please don't crash my game. Switching to Rick, I need to destroy seven trucks. And once that's done, just exit and the trophy has been earned. We are so close, guys. Just bear with me here. Back to playing as Daryl, I have to stab 10 walkers through the fence in 60 seconds. Just bundle them up and spam square. Easy. Rick tries to meet up with Morgan again, but he doesn't like friendly faces or faces really at all. So he snipes at us. The only trophy we need to earn here is Shadow. We can't get hit by a sniper, which proves to be a lot more annoying than I could have ever thought. Bam. Woo. This is getting intense. No! Fuck! I just, I had to get grabbed right there. That was the end. No! God, you are such a fucking... You bitch. You bitch. Yes! Let's go! Ooh, that was the worst trophy I've ever went for in this game. Shit, it was awful. Thank God that's over. Well, uh, ha, ha. and my PlayStation's frozen or something. What just happened? After that mess was sorted, I move into the second to last episode. Playing as Glenn, I need to get a stab kill, melee, firearm, execution, stomp, and then switch to Michonne to get a grenade kill. Have the trophy bug, so let out a last minute prey stab and get the trophy thick skin. In that same area, I just got 15 heavy attack kills with a katana earning headhunter. Then the finale of all finales to end the entire Walking Dead series. Let's finish this up. The last two trophies are just story related, so I'm gonna let it play out. Have Glenn make the the case for everyone living together have michonne make the well i mean michonne's the one that uh you know kind of killed his daughter so yeah let's have her do it let's have her do it destiny glenn or michonne baby one more trophy and it just requires me to beat this shit okay eat my nuts let's just no i don't want to fucking fight her just just get this tank already it is literally just caused me nothing but grief why does, out of everybody, Lori have to fight this tank? I don't get it. It's taking my full focus. There, that's it. I defeated the tank. Okay, it's still gonna shoot. Ooh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How did you live that? That was a live grenade that just blew up in there, right in your face. Why? Stop grabbing me, you fucks. Oh, that did a lot of damage to Mr. Governor. Oh, it did a lot of damage to me, too. Get off of me. Holy fuck. Get off. And, dude, this zombie, they are picking sides. I swear to God. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna use this on you. This does a lot. Get me out of the fire. You fuck. Eat my nuts. Eat my nuts. Is that it, man? Is that, please tell me there's not, like, five extra parts. Just one last grab to finish it off, huh? One last grab. Jesus Christ. What a fucking horrible game. This, I, oh my gosh, this was such a waste of money. I, I don't think I've ever felt this much relief platinuming a game just to get it. Oh my God, I don't, I don't even know what to say. Uh, I seriously don't. This game was so bad. Close game, delete game, get it on out of here please and that finishes up every walking dead game it definitely had some highs and lows that's for damn sure if you stayed all the way to the end you are a real one i also gotta thank everybody too for just giving me the opportunity to do this even if i had to play destinies but with that god bless you all see you guys in the seven percent females i see you too i got some crazy shit planned so like my buddy daniel larson used to say stay tuned with that peace brethrens